One of the hardest things about moving from a, an analog soundboard to a digital console is understanding how they approach things differently. When you've got an analog soundboard, everything is hardwired, just like uh, a manual typewriter. In a manual typewriter, there's a physical connection between the key that you press and the hammer that strikes down on the page. And on a traditional soundboard, sound literally comes in the back as an electrical signal, and then as it moves down the board, each of the various dials or switches that it goes through is physically connected inside the board. You're literally adjusting uh, internal electronic components that are physically wired together. And so the sound comes down to the bottom to the fader and then moves over and comes up through the out and it's very physical. And that's like a manual typewriter. And when you move from a manual typewriter to a word processor, on the surface it seems like much the same thing. You press the A key and an A appears on your screen. But of course, a manual typewriter and a word processor on a computer are two very different things. In addition to being a word processor, a computer can also play video games. It can run a spreadsheet or a database. And while it uses the same keyboard to accomplish all those things, when you're playing the video game, you might push a particular key to move a character in one direction uh, or back again the other way. So when you've got a digital soundboard, what you see here are controls that operate in a very different manner than what you might be used to on a traditional soundboard. Layers are one of the most important thing to understand about dealing with a digital soundboard. Because here we have channels 1 through 24 and we have scribble strips which allow us to label them appropriately. Uh, if you can see closely enough you'll find that I've renamed channel 1 Podium. And so that is uh, a way to, to keep track of what's going on. So I can, with my touchscreen, bring up the name and change it to whatever I want. Right now it says Podium, but I could change it to something else. Now, because I can select a channel, and hopefully you can see the channel moving from one to the other here, I can select a channel and then adjust the gain on that particular channel, then select another channel and use that same gain dial to adjust the next channel. So these hardwired, uh, uh, dedicated to a particular uh, function dials can be used on any channel that I like. I just need to select the channel that I want to use them on. But what if I want to do more than just channels 1 through 24? This is a 48 channel board. What if I want to adjust channels 25 through 48? Well, for that, I move to layer B. Now, it may not seem like much has happened, but if I adjust a few of these faders and then move back to channel A and adjust a few of these faders, you can very quickly see the difference when I move to B as opposed to A. Now, when I move between these two layers, you see the sliders moving up and down, and from an analog perspective, that seems like things are changing. But if I move from a word processor to a spreadsheet, on the computer screen, it looks like things have changed, but I didn't type anything into the word, press, word processor. I didn't type anything into the spreadsheet. All I did was change the view from word processor to spreadsheet. Back to word processor, spreadsheet. And so you can visualize this by saying that layer A, when you move to layer B, it's like you've got an additional 24 more sliders off to the right of where you started. And then I can move to layer C. And you notice here that my scribble strips have all changed. They're color-coded by the sort of uh, channel that it is. 
and you'll note that this one here is yellow and it is the main and when I raise it up you will notice that not only the one that I'm moving moves but the main left right slider moves at the same time even though I'm not touching it that is because these are two different instances of the same thing so if I duplicate my screen and have two monitors that are both showing my word processor then I'm going to see everything twice on those two different screens and that's what hap is happening here those are two different views on the very same piece of information so if I select this channel you can see here that I can make adjustment adjustments to the equalization and I'm going to hit the flip fader button and now you can see the equalizer here and if I make changes I'm actually making changes to the EQ for the mains. Now that can be confusing and if I want to I can center all of these just by hitting the select button and then uh, fader flip uh, back to the view that I was looking at before. So by changing the layer I can have a view of all sorts of different arrangements and you can see here uh, hopefully that I have made uh, some custom uh, layers here. So here we've got Podium, Input 2, Group 4, Auxiliary 1, uh, Effects Return 4, uh, and uh, DCA 7 and DCA 8. Now I assembled those and on layer E that is a custom layer and on any of these layers I can rearrange them any way that I like. And so I've got layer A and then off to the right of it 24 more in layer B and then keep on moving to the right and so we've got a, a, a bank of faders that's so very long uh, we've uh, essentially got about 150 different uh, faders that I can have here uh, moving down through these various layers and if we think that every time we select a new lower layer we're moving off to the right we'll be able to visualize that appropriately now, over here on the right hand side, here we have our main left right. And when this is selected, when I adjust the faders, what I'm adjusting is the amount of audio coming out of the main left right speakers. But we have all these buttons over here Mix 1. And you'll notice that my main left right fader went down to the bottom because it is no longer my main left right fader it is now my main mix one fader and let's say that was uh, the auxiliary channel feeding the stage monitors and so I bring that up now as I'm adjusting layer A mix one I'm adjusting with the faders the amount of audio going to the monitors so if I hit main left right they go down if I hit mix one they come back up again and again we're shifting our view but this time we're not adding to the right this time we're adding below we're still looking at layer A and so mix one layer A I can also do mix one layer B and so if you can imagine a grid where every time we move to a lower layer we're adding to the right and every time we move to a lower mix we're adding below you can see that we have a massive array of sliders available but you need to remember which layer you're on and which mix or main it is that you're adjusting where you are in that grid inside your head which allows you to consider where you are adjusting these sliders can be used for many different purposes they can be your word processor they can be your spreadsheet they can be uh, your video game they do a whole lot of different things and keeping it clear in your head what you're adjusting according to your layer and your mixes is essential